All right, so we've now started the recorder. Um, this is Encounter 9 from Learning Biblical Hebrew, uh, HE 101 is what we're calling it, uh, Basic Biblical Hebrew, basically. Um, so, um, as we get started, I want to just say that the, I'm sorry for the time difference, um, America changed their clocks and Israel hasn't, so I was caught unawares. Uh, we are in chapter 9 of the of the book. Um, I don't anticipate this being very difficult. The last uh, several chapters have been more intense, and this one's going to be basically uh, kind of a review, kind of getting an overview of the whole noun system before we move on to verbs. We're going to look at, um, in the next chapter, I believe, we're looking at numbers. Yeah. So in this one, we're gonna we're gonna get a head start on numbers and uh, look at noun patterns and how they relate to uh, to roots. Before we get started, I want to go ahead and open up a uh, a whiteboard for questions. Your pens are turned on if you want to write something. Um, Dana, I think it's your first time with us, so if you just want to try to write on the board just to see how it works for you, you can use your mouse. Okay, just, oh. Or if you have a touch screen computer, you can use your finger too. Okay, let me see. Oh, okay. Oh, it works. Okay. Uh, All right. See. Just be aware that you're in, you're in charge of deleting your stuff. So if anything's on the board and somebody needs to write, then you should delete so that the other person can can write. Sure. How do I delete? On the right oh, side. Oh, just like that, right? On the right side, oh. you've got um, you've got controls, you've got colors and and whatnot. You can also type if you choose the, the tool at the top. Okay, so I saw a little trash can. I guess that erased it. Exactly. Ah, yes. That's it. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, Dana, you've been, I understand, uh, listening to the encounters that were on the internet, on YouTube. <clears throat> I, have, I have been, been following, following that way. Mm -hmm. And Do you have um, any questions before we get started with this lesson? I I did. It wasn't in nine. It That's was fine. in eight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think what I wanted to ask was I'm in the workbook working through the translations. Yep. And number eight, one of the hardest ones, I thought it'd be... It's, it's a little bit more difficult because I feel that their translations are a lot of words that aren't even in there. So mm -hmm. I realize that I translate too close to maybe the Hebrew. Anyways, number one, it has, I got really mixed up on the construct forms and finding the verb. And I, I don't think I can use the board, Jason, for writing out these Hebrew words. Uh -huh. But it's the one that said the Yosef Yerod meets Rima, and if it had, if it had stopped at this point, the next three words but you can Oto Potifar, Potifar. Mm -hmm. if it had stopped there, I would have been okay. And Joseph went down towards Egypt, and he and Potiphar purchased or bought him. Mm -hmm. But there's three construct forms before in the translation mm -hmm. and they were it looks like they're masculine and they're singular and I got tangled up I, I got tangled up in them I I thought um, I had to look at the key on this one and to get the answer and it seems to me that when they translated it that verb didn't even come in uh, for the object until all to, almost towards the end so I just found it difficult and was wondering how, um, you know, when when you have to translate everything else before you get to. Are you are you talking about these, these two structures on the on the board, and then there's a third one, Ish Mitzri. Yes, that's it. The last one was Ish. That's that's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. So Sris Paro comes from Saris, which is an official or a eunuch. Okay, Sris Paro. Paro is the noun mm -hmm. Pharaoh. So it's a eunuch okay. of Pharaoh or a, an officer of an official of Pharaoh. 
Do you, do you get that? Okay. That Saris is, we think of Saris as somebody in Mesulas today. It's like somebody that's been castrated, but it's not really. Like sometimes in the Bible, you have someone who's called eunuch. That's the official word, but it's just a title. And it, uh, it the person can have a wife and whatever. But this is a eunuch of Pharaoh. That is uh, Pharaoh's official. Okay. I think what I... I try to attach Cerise to Potiphar, uh, no, if I'm saying that right. Potiphar. No, this is, this is and, just um, apposition. Okay. okay. Meaning that, um, that, that uh, so you'll have one word for something, and then you can have another word for something that just is like commad in. Like it's uh, just in there, given, like you could say, Solomon, Shlomo, Solomon, the son of David. Mm -hmm. When you say the son of David, you don't, you're not making a new grammatical category here. It's the same person. If you were diagramming it, you would have like Solomon, and then you'd have on the side an equals, and then it's going to say son of David. So it's the equals. This is the idea of the uh, the apposition. You know what I mean? I think so. I think so. So Potiphar, okay, this guy Potiphar. This is this is just the name of it. This is Srisparo. Srisparo is the Potiphar. Uh, oh. Swiss mm -hmm. is Potiphar. It's um, Potiphar is the name of this official. Okay, right. Okay, and Saul Tabachim is the chief cook. Tabach. Mm -hmm. He's the chief cook. Um, so he's Saul Ha Tabachim, the the prince of the cooks. The chief cook. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Does right. that answer your question? It did. I I think so. I like I said, I had to cheat and look it up in yeah, order well, to get the guidance. Are you using the electronic version on logos or? No, I'm using the. Uh, you mean the the book? I'm. Yeah. I, I was using the book, the key in the back. Okay. And to sort it out. There was just so many, um, there was a lot of constructs, three constructs, and I couldn't associate, because you know how the masculine plural, you get a clue, you get the zere and the yod, yeah. okay, so you know that it's attached, or even if it was a feminine, but these were all singular, and it's like, what word belongs with what? Yeah. And so finally, I just had to sit and study it for a little bit before I, I realized I've just never seen so many constructs in one sentence so yeah. but that helps that, that helps it just i just had to take my time with this one a lot so, if so i thought know, it was the hardest one so just so you know this this one is uh is not construct this is a noun and this is an adjective so it's a man an egyptian it's a adjective uh, noun phrase oh so that's right it's an egyptian describing man. the man yeah an okay. egyptian man Me too. okay, okay. All right. Uh, okay. John, do you have any questions before we move into uh, the material? Not a question. I think it's just a comment. And um, I was curious about the word order. Um, the um, eventually figured out the uh, oto, um, the uh, after the verb, mm -hmm. uh, the direct object. I mean, the classic word order would have been verb, subject, and then direct object right. here they've moved it forward and presumably for stylistic reasons or uh, am i trying to read too much I mean, uh, let's place emphasis let's say it. that we have uh vacant potiphar at yourself this is um potiphar vacant vacant 
that you can potiphar at yourself so potiphar purchased joseph um, this is verb subject object normally when you use auto the for the direct object instead of this when you have auto you're going to move that after the verb if you're going to use any of the prep the prepositional phrases that we covered last year uh, last week if we got prepositional phrases with um, personal uh, prompt pronominal suffixes pronominal suffixes it's not all coming through but it's okay okay when you have pronominal suffixes with the preposition like alehem you know alehem to them alehem we didn't cover this one but if you have alehem to them you're going to say vayomer alehem moshe like vayomer uh, alehem he said to them moshe moshe said to them it's just those prepos prep prepositional <laughs> phrases like to go up between the vav consecutive and the subject Okay, thanks. Uh, we're we're going to cover more of the prepositions later on. Last week we just covered le, like to, be, ke, me. Um, we covered et. But we will eventually get to el, which takes the plural suffixes. Eli, elecha, eleha, elechem. We're going to do al, takes also the plural, suff the plural uh, suffixes, el alai, okay, not, not ali, but alai with the plural. We'll get into the rest, we just haven't gotten to them yet. And before we move on, I wanted to comment about the word saris. Saris. Um, a couple of things, number one, the kamats is long. So when it's in construct, it's going to become, instead of this, it's going to become sris with shabbat. So sris pa'o. So that's, that is one indicator that it's construct instead of um, absolute. The other thing is that the, the pattern for sris is the same as the pattern for words like abir. Abir means um, like a knight or somebody like a... Um, Kind of like a, a warrior or something like it. It came to mean knight, like a fighter. Okay, um, it's the same pattern, but the resh in the middle of uh, saris, the resh refu refuses the dagesh, and we have compensatory lengthening. So it's a ah and e. So abir and saris are of the same pattern. Make sense? That's kind of what we're going to talk about today is the noun patterns, um, specifically from our textbook, but I pulled out a couple of lists from uh, Waltke and O'Connor. So the first thing we'll look at is uh, basically the different common uh, Hebrew grammar books. The one we're using, of course, is uh, Learning Biblical Hebrew by Kutz and Josberger here. Um, a very common one nowadays is the basics of biblical Hebrew. I think I think both of you probably own it. Do you own it? Yes. Yeah, yeah I've got it too. This is the one that I learned from. Uh, Sao. I, I call him Sao. S E O W. I don't know how maybe he pronounces it different, but we always said Sao. Um, Wine Green. The year before I took Hebrew in 1999 was when the college changed from Wine Green to Sao. Um, so is more up to date and user friendly than Wine Green, but Wine Green is traditional. I know that Dana has uh, finished Sal, haven't you? Or not Sal, but Wine Green. Wine Green, I, I did. It was, um, I did finish it online. We did a course online mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, once. Yeah, that's a, it's a hard grammar to work through, but, uh, wow. but that's really a traditional grammar for Hebrew. Um, this is more of an intermediate one, The Introduction to Biblical Hebrew Syntax by Waltke and O'Connor. It's not a book that you could sit down and learn Hebrew from, but once you've already studied a year of grammar, you can use it for 
classifications and for understanding what's happening with the words that you've already learned. So anyway, these are basically the, the most well-known grammars of uh, Biblical Hebrew today. <clears throat> I've already said that. Chapter 5 of Waltke O'Connor is what's relevant to our, uh, our chapter, chapter 9 in, in the book that we're looking at. Basically, he lays out patterns. He's, he, first, um, first, you'll notice that all of these words have the same root, ket, bet, rish. They all share the same root. But depending on the pattern that is given to those root letters, they can take on different meanings. So we could say, we could say that this is the kal verb, chavu, mm -hmm. they joined. Chavel is an associate or a friend, we say today, chavel. Chavel, a company. Chibel or chibal, he joined something to something else. It's a, an active verb. Chabal, we're going to look at this pattern in, a, in just a second, because this is kind of a, a neat one. Chaveret, chevra. Chevra today means company, like a, in society also. Choveret, a joined thing, something that's joined together. In modern Hebrew, choveret is a, like a notebook. Uh, something that has, like our, our workbook is a choveret. Machberet in modern Hebrew is a notebook that you just write in, that you write notes that doesn't have like work uh, exercises and stuff. Um, in, my, in the Bible, I guess it was a, a joining together of something. I don't really know what it is, but mechabra uh, or mechabrot. It's also, it's always in the plural, this word, it's clamps. Um, when they built the temple, the tabernacle, they had things that were like rings that joined things together. They're clamps, mechabrot. Mechabra, mechabrot. Hebron is a city and a Hebroni is somebody from that city. Um, all right, so let's move on. Uh, the, the point is that, that all of them have that root. And so we're going to see a lot of words in Hebrew that have common roots. And those roots are tied together like the word chadash. Chadash means new. But the month renews itself every month. So we call it Chodesh, because it's uh, the Chodesh is the month. It's when things become new. The, the month ends, and then you have a new month. Chodesh. Um, we would have, what else do we have from this root? Mm -mm, I'm not, I didn't prepare anything with this, but I'm just thinking. Um, if you, you could say Chadish means um, modern. Like some, it's, it's new, so it's modern. Lechadesh um, or Chidesh means uh, to make something new. He made it new. Chidesh, he renewed it. Um, the idea is that we need to just get used to the, to the patterns of, uh, of root letters that break into different vowel uh, combinations. So, so if you have... Um, Evid, slave, Evid, um, it can take different patterns, and that same root could mean Avad, he worked, or Avdut, Avdut, slavery, um, and then you've got an ending, Ut, that's added to that root. That's what we're going to look at today, basically. Um, all of these share not, a, they don't share a root because you can have words with a common root. They don't share a root, but they, they share a pattern. All of these words share a pattern. And that pattern is here. It's shva. It's got uh, kubutz with dagesh following and then uh, patah, uh, kamatz. Sorry, it's late. I'm tired. <laughs> Uh, but this is the pattern right there. So all of these words have the same vowel pattern, but because they are different roots, different things happen. We already had alumim. Alumim we had in the Joseph story, where mm -hmm. his brothers um, had sheaves in his dreams that, that bowed down to him, his brothers, father and mother. Alumim. That's the plural of aluma. The same vowel pattern, I don't know if you can see, but 
hopefully you can I'll try to make it bigger um I don't know how to do this <laughs> okay come back up uh it uh you see the same pattern it's ah u with dagesh and then a ah. aluma asupa asupa mm -hmm. it's the same pattern this has the same pattern kevutsot kevutsot curls or locks in, in your hair um curls today we would call them taltalim but um but this is like lock of a lock of hair okay this word is the same pattern but the resh rejects the dagesh and it becomes lengthened instead of u it becomes o so bechora Okay, it's the right of firstborn. Bachol is firstborn, Bachol. So Bachola is the right of the firstborn, like um, Jacob and Esau, where he sold his, his rights as firstborn. The word for redemption, Geula. Geula. Okay, this is also, this one, Yerusha, is also an inheritance. 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 Sgula is a word that's used, as far as I know, only to like Am Sgula. Am Sgula is the chosen people. It's, um, it says private this first. Is treasure? Maybe. Treasure. It's, kind of, it's kind of unclear where it comes from or what it means. But Am Sgula is a, it's a frozen expression meaning the chosen people. Uh, maybe the people of his treasure, right? if you're saying it's treasure. I, I don't really know where it comes from. Uh, Aruba is a security or a pledge, maybe a deposit, like Kafkada. Beula, we use it to mean an action today, but apparently, according to Waltke and O'Connor, it means wages or reward. Aguda is still used today to mean like uh, an organization, a band or troop. Avuda a body of slaves, again from Eved, and Kuda is an order or a visitation, or in this case, governing authorities. Uh, the point is that all of them have the same vowel patterns. This pattern we would call Ktula, on the on the basis of the root that's used for basically showing patterns, Ktula. So, uh, John, what do you feel about this? Is this too much, too heavy? You there? Yes, I'm here. I'm absorbing it. Okay. Of course, this is not something to be memorized. It's just to, to show that, that we can have shared roots between words or we can have shared patterns. Okay, those patterns are generally to deal with the vowels. They, they can be vowels, they can be dagesh, like in this case, and they can also be prefixes, prefixes or suffixes, like avdut, we mentioned a minute ago, slavery. Vowels, dagesh, prefixes or suffixes. In the next group, I believe, yes, it's prefixes. This is prefixed mem. It's very common to have mem prefix for nouns, or yod prefix, or taf. These are very common prefixes. So in this case, we can see dalit betresh is the root, and when you have that mem prefix on there, it becomes midbal. Midbal is wilderness. This one, the root is like kum. Kum is to arise, to get up. Vayakom. Vayakom, he got up. Vayakom. He got up. Um, we say this a lot, like uh, the story of Jonah. He arose and went to flee to, Tarsh, to Tarshish. That's uh, Vayakom. All right, this root, can you guess what that might be? Like we say, this one is kaf, it's a kof vav mem, 
This one is Dalit, Dalit Bet Resh. What would the root of this one be? Well, it looks like Yashab, a Yod, a Sheen, and a Bay. Yes, Yashab. Yashab is he sat, right? He sat, yes. Mm -hmm. we, had, we had the verb, uh, she gave a birth. We said Yalda. The verb itself is Yalad, to parent, to give birth, to, to generate, or whatever. Um, these words where you have Yod in the beginning, Yod. Originally, these roots were actually Vav. So Vav, Valad and Vashav. This comes out in, in other forms of words that we're going to see. Like we talked last week about the difference between Vyosef, Yarad, Mitzrayma, Yarad, because the text doesn't say Vyosef, Yarad, it says Vyosef, Hurad. Hurad. Hurad means he was taken down, brought down. Joseph was brought down to Egypt. What we see here, this U, is a characteristic of the passive, past tense, causative. It's, um, it's the Hufal. So Yarad, that Vav, that Yod, changes to a Vav in most of the forms. Outside of the Kal, um, the PL, and the pual, which we're going to we're going to learn much later, but uh, outside of these three uh, verbal stems, the vav is present in um, no the yod is present. Excuse me, yod. Um, in the other ones, in the other four tenses, no, also hitpail, hitpail. Also, the yod is present. In the other three, excuse me, the vav comes back into play. So we're going to look real quick at the next slide and see basically what's happening here. You've got the root, Vav Shin Bet, that has the Ma attached to it, like Mafteach. Mafteach is a, a key. Mafteach. Key. It has that Ma attached to it. It becomes historically Maushav. Maushav. And that diphthong ow becomes o. Instead of maushav, it comes it becomes moshav. Maushav becomes moshav. Moshav means seat. This is the real form. Moshav. The same with the word yalad or valad. It's maulad becoming molad. Molad is the place where you're born. Molad. Moshav, Molad. We see it also in the word death. The word death is Mavet. Mavet. When it goes into construct, it becomes, it would have historically become Maut, Maut, but that Maut also becomes Mot. Mot. Mot means death, death of someone. The normal form is mavet, and the construct form is mot. It's the same thing happening historically. Kind of heavy. Good information. So moshav means seat. It means a seat on an airplane. It means a seat at the table. It means a seat in a, in a ruling council or in the Knesset. This is all kinds of seats. The plural is moshavim. Moshavim. Moshavim seats. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't know if I'm giving you information that you don't need. The idea is to just to get you to rec recognize patterns. That's it. You don't need to memorize a bunch of words right now. You have enough vocabulary words to memorize. The idea is just to look at patterns. So, mafteach is from the... That's root. helpful. Yeah, it's, it's not something that you need to memorize. So, There's no pressure here. This is These are not words that you need to know. Um, but it is good to go over and introduce you to words that you're not responsible for. <laughs> this word is mafteach. Mafteach means key. 
Like you use it to liftoch. Patach is to open. Patach. He opened. Patach. He opened. So mafteach comes from patach. Ma'achelet comes from food. This is an instrument for food, a knife. Supposed to be an instrument that you use to cut food open. Ma'achelet. Okay, this is the, the abstract, because this, this mem pre prefix is used for abstracts, for shafat. Shafat means he judged. So mishpat is judgment. Okay, this is the from the root ra'a, he saw. He saw. Appearance, mal'e. It's what people see when they look at you. They see your appearance. And this is an instrument for appearance, mal'a. It's what you look, what you use to look at yourself. Mal'a, mirror. Mal'a. Still it's from ra'a, the same verb. They look the same, because one is e and one is a. And this is from the root of melech, malach. He reigned. Mamlacha is where, where you reign. It's a location. The kingship. The, the, it could be the location or the abstract. It's mostly location, mamlacha. Malchut is the abstract. The uh, kingship, like being, being a king is malchut. Malchut, like yalut. Um, all right. That, that's enough to give you a headache, I think. Um, if you want to look at what we have in the book itself, we're going to look in chapter 9. Let's see. Um, they have traits and professions. What we're, looking, what we're looking at now, they have on page 135. He actually took these from Walkin O'Connor. He just took a couple out of the list. Um, so Ganav is somebody who, Gonev, he steals. It's a thief. Someone who steals. The pattern here, of course, is katal. It's got dagesh in the middle with two A vowels, one short and one long. Katal. Ganav. Dayan. Dayan. From Dean. Dean means judgment. Dayan is someone who gives judgment, a judge. This is a common uh, blessing when you receive bad news in, in Hebrew. Someone tells you there was a car accident or that someone passed away or you know any kind of bad news, you declare that God knows better than we do by saying that God is the judge of truth. He's the true judge, meaning that um, judgment is in his hand and we, we don't have power over it. The expression is, Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam, Dayan Ha'emet. Blessed are you, Lord our God, ruler of the world, the judge of truth. Dayan Ha'emet. This is construct. This is why the Kamats turn, turns to Patach. Dayan, Dayan Ha'emet. Okay. Somebody who habitually... What's that? What was that, Donna? Oh, no, I, I, I just observed. I was looking over. There is a uh, kamat down there. Well, I'll look at the book. Let's mm -hmm. see. Yes, That's it's right. a kamat, so it's construct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just Cause, observing. Because right. when it's in construct, it, it loses its accent, technically. So this becomes a closed syllable. Let's change the color. This is a closed syllable, yan. Okay, yan. Y-A-N, and it's unaccented, so if you left the kamatsa, it would be O, Dayon. You don't want Dayon because it would be a closed, accented, uh, closed, unaccented syllable. It needs to have a short vowel. That would be O. So it switches to Patach to keep the A sound. 
Dayan. Okay, the next one is Khata. Khata is somebody who khote, somebody who sins, sinner. It's uh, someone who sins habitually, obviously. Parash is the same pattern. It's the same pattern, but the resh rejects dagesh, and so it goes down here as long. Parash. Parash is a horseman, somebody who, like in the army, somebody who rides a horse in the army. Cavalry. But it's a it's a person that's on. It's not cavalry because cavalry is like the segment of the army. And this is the person that's riding the horse. Okay. The next is hunter from uh, Latsud to hunt. Sayad. Sayad. Sayad is hunter. And Kharash is the same as Parash. It's a craftsman. Now we use the root today for a factory as well. Um, okay. Just a reminder about your vocabulary because these are the words that you're responsible for. The vocabulary sheet that I sent out before, they, it's taken from the vocabulary in the book. These are the words that you really are responsible for. Um, and it, so it shows, remember, where, where you're supposed to be reviewing. So at the top of the list, it's going to say the day of the week you should be doing it. If you start on Sunday, then Sunday is one, Monday is two, three, whatever. If you start on, on Monday, then Monday is day one and, and, four, and so forth. You need to review day one when you're learning day two. It means you learn these words. It won't go, it won't be more than seven words a day. You know, uh, normally four or five words a day. Learn these words and then review the words for the previous day. And each day will tell you what to review at the bottom. What's that? We're this is what's that are in, oh, is someone, is Jim talking? Are these the words in the workbook? They are from the uh, workbook. I, recognize them. Chapter I, went, I went through and I divided all the words up to chapter 17 into vocabulary lists for daily daily learning. I can send okay, that to you, I I just, send that I to you afterwards. Um, I had another question. You've got two extra words up on the screen. Mine ends at Parash, Horseman. Mm -hmm. um, do I have the right book? Or yeah, yeah. Is, I, is no, this, this, is, the... this is from Walt and O'Connor. That's from the, the Introduction to Hebrew Syntax, the, the book I mentioned earlier. Okay. All right. Just wanted yeah. to be sure. Our book, he took the list from there, but he, he removed two of them. I see. Okay. Um, John, what were you were you asking something? It was more just of a joking comment about the uh, when you get to day two of the vocabulary, reviewing day one, and in the hope that you have one hasn't completely forgotten the day one words. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's why you got to review every day. There's a lot of vocabulary. Yes. But, you know, at an early stage, you just uh, try to absorb as many new words as you can, because later on, when you're trying to draw, like, conclusions about patterns and and actually trying to learn, you know, to use the language, you're going to be dependent on how many words you have in storage in your, in your memory. So, um, I tried to put where I could little remarks like this. Um, Chara sounds bad. By the way, it sounds it sounds like a curse word because we have a curse word that ends in Aleph. Chara, it means like, you know, dirty stuff, kaki. Um, but Vayichar is the actual form that sound that appears in the Bible. And this sounds not as bad. It, it, mean, it can mean like somebody got angry. But Vayichar sounds much better than Chara. Chara is, <laughs> it sounds like a dirty word to me. But uh, Tabachim, here I just put the plural form of Tabach. Handsome, Yafe would be plural Yafim. Yafa is Yafot. Um, so I just put little remarks in the vocabulary for you to memorize the vocabulary and then have these little things on the side. Sometimes these words on the side are more important than the one they're having you memorize because the one they're having you memorize is like a lexical form you'll see in a dictionary but not necessarily the word you're going to see in the text. So it, it'd be by context, I suppose, on um, tabak. 
uh, you have cook, which is nothing mm. to do with the guard. So that's where I suppose it, it would be. I'm just wondering uh, about the um, baker. Well, I, I know for sure. I know for that sure that in in um, in modern Hebrew, it certainly means a cook, someone who prepares food. Um, um, you, have, you have the person who who kills the food, who kills the animal, is called shochet, and then the person who cooks the food is called tabach. Um, but where we see in the story of Potiphar that we've just been going over, um, he's called Sara Tabachim. And there's no reason to think that Potiphar was necessarily a cook or the chief of cooks. So they're having us understand that it could be that Potiphar was the head guard, that he was, uh, he was the head of the guards of Pharaoh, rather than being the head of the cooks. And that's, I think that's why they put that in there. Um, but you should learn it as a cook. You should learn it as cook because in every other context, that's what it means. I don't think I've ever seen it outside of Salat Abachim. I don't think I've ever seen it in a, uh, a guard. So, All right, the whiteboard is here for any further questions you have before we start reading. We are at the point now where we're starting to read about um, the children of uh, Leah and Rachel. Well, also first their, their marriage to Jacob and the sly trick that uh, Levan pulled on him. Uh, but before we get there, do you have questions or anything that we went on anything that we went over until now? Did I totally fry your brain, or are you uh, are you doing okay? Um, I I think mine can wait. I I was going to ask you if it was construct. It was in the workbook. It's Macomb for place, and instead of a comet underneath the mem, it's a shiva, and I didn't see a word before it. That would have made sense. So I can I can always uh, ask that later. It just I thought, why is that reduced? Why is that reduced there? Well, we can. But we can I wasn't able to figure out why. What page is it? Oh, sorry. I thought that was what you meant by questions. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Um, it uh, would have been on page one hundred. Okay. And it's the very last one. And it has a Shabbat underneath it. And, um, mm, mm -hmm. yeah, um, that's kind of an advanced uh, issue. Sometimes, okay, for whatever reason, sometimes we have a construct form that can be followed by a shir. And this construct is basically of whatever this is. It can also happen, it happens in two places in the Bible where we have a construct form and then a verb and then the subject and such. So this is what happens in Genesis chapter 1. Um, Bereshit. Bereshit is a construct form um, and it's followed by the verb bara. I would think this would be impossible, but it, it's not really. There's one other place in the Bible where it has construct that uh, goes straight into a finite verb, um, which seems weird for us, but uh, it actually happens. So in this case, it's um, it's like the place of where the king's prisoners are there. So it, it is a construct. It is construct. Your, your eye is right, um, but it's not construct of one noun to another. It's construct of one noun to a phrase, to a relative phrase. I see. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything you got to throw out there, uh, John, before we go on? Um, not at the moment, no. Except to say, in terms of my own reading, I'm way behind, so... Um, well, we're going we're gonna to push forward. Going. We're, we're going to push forward with the, with the reading. Because right now it's 1.52 a.m. We started it at uh, 1 o'clock, so it's almost been an hour. I think you have another half an hour, 40 minutes. That's right, yeah. Um, yeah. So we're going to spend that whole time reading and try to get you caught up on reading for this chapter. We're going to read half of it, half of this chapter. Um, Which uh, chapter are you referring to? Chapter 9. 9? Yeah, we're doing the Are we in the workbook? 
Yeah, chapter nine from the workbook. Chapter nine from the workbook. It's uh, it's starting here with uh, Isaac sending Jacob. Oh, on page one hundred and three. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay. Well, it's it's on the on the board, so it's on the computer. We don't we okay. don't need to open the book if you don't want. Um. So while we go through here, we've got plenty of time for reading, um, and we're going to go through and and get as much done as we can. I've highlighted a few words that I want to take a look at um, as we go along. And uh, all right, this is kind of a long verse right here. It's really not how the verse is written in the Bible. They've added a few details and made the verse longer than it really is. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, John, would you go and read this verse for us? It's kind of long, but you struggle through it and we'll we'll get past it. Struggle being the operative word. <laughs> it's okay. Um, by by Ishla Itzak et Ov al Ak Sa Sa Esav Exxon Ahim. So Esav is uh, how you say Esau. Esav is Esau. Oh, okay. So, Ahin Ail Lech. But then now. You've heard of you've heard of Padan Aram in the Bible, right? The place called uh, Padan Aram. You've heard of the place Padan Aram? I'm sure I have. For some reason, it's not. Uh... Yeah, I, I'm not sure where it is either. I'm, I'm sure it's in the northern part of Israel, but I, I mean, that's just a guess because Aram is up in the north. Um, Padan Aram takes a locative hay, the, the hay of direction, that hay right there. Oh, there pa yeah. Padena Aram means to Padan Aram. Padena Aram. Aram. Mm -hmm. Just uh, by way of comment, this word is pointed incorrectly in the textbook. In the, in the workbook it says, Uva'et Hahu. Mm -hmm. But who who is masculine? It should be he. Uva etahi. Notice that this is the normal way that the Torah writes he. Torah has he like this with uh, with uh, with this chirik under the he before a vav. It means he for this word. Okay. Sorry, so by Yishlach, okay. Yitzchak. Mm -hmm. Yaakov, Aya, Ben, Ava, Janim. Okay, so this word Ben, it, it's telling you how old someone is. You say, son of X years. This is the expression in Hebrew, son of the son of X years means X years old. Um, for, a, for a girl, obviously, you say daughter of, but. But Sheva Shanim, but Sheva Shanim means seven years old. But Sheva Shanim, seven years old. Okay, so in this case, Ben Sheva Shanim Veshivim Shana, seven years plus seventy years. Seventy seven. Shiv Shivaim Shivaim Shana. Mm 
if a n wait m yeah and cove a and sham a sub sam a sub a sub oh right okay I was thinking it was the final uh, in sound. The final what? Well, I stumbled through. Yes, 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 yes. Vaislach, and he sent Yitzchak, subject. Vaislach Yitzchak et Yaakov, object. See, if you would, if we didn't have this, Vaislach Yitzchak Yaakov would sound really weird. And he sent Isaac Jacob. Right? Since there is no objective case, you use et to indicate the object. Vaishlach Yitzchak et Yaakov al af Esav. What's it? Isaac sent Jacob. Yes, exactly. Isaac sent Jacob. Al af Esav Achiv. Achiv is apposition to Esav. Achiv is ach with e. With vav, the vav here means his. Okay, so his, a chiv, his brother. A chiv. Remember the construct of ach is a chi, like this. The his ending is o, is the vav. When you put that vav on there, it wouldn't make sense to say achio, achio. So there's a vowel before it, so instead of achio, it becomes achiv. This becomes a full vowel because it's uh, before the tone. Achiv, his brother. His brother. Achiv. Does that make sense? So I lost track of the sentence. So Isaac sent Jacob to. Mm. I'm not sure what part of the story this is. Um, let's see, this is his wives. <laughs> Maybe here Allah Fisav means away from the face of his brother, like away from him because he hated him. I think this is where Jacob ran away when he went to Padanaram and then he, he married Laban's daughters and then he came back to meet Esav later. Right? So, Vayelech, he went Padana Aram to Padana Aram. Okay, that's where he went to live. Uva etahi, and at that time, Uva etahi, Yaakov Aya, Jacob was. Ben Sheva Shanim, Veshivim Shana. He was 77 years old. Hmm? And, and he went, Vayelech, El Lavan, to Lavan. This is what you normally say, Laban. Laban in English, Lavan. Achi Rivka, the brother of Rebekah, the mother of Jacob and Esau. Okay, so the verbs vayelech, vayelech, um, haya, vayishlach, these are the verbs. Construct phrases, achi rivka, the brother of Re uh, Rebecca, um, em Yaakov uh, esav, the, the mother of Jacob and Esau. Um, this is also a construct phrase, af esav. But we don't need to mess with that one right now. Um, oh, I wanted to know. <laughs> that was the one. I. It looks like nose off. Yeah, it is nose. Off, but, mm -hmm. Okay. I think it means here that he sent him away from his presence or away from his face. Um, oh. Yeah. Oh. Next. Dana, would you read this one, please? 
Ve'ehav Yaakov Et Rachel Bat Laban Ve'ya'avod Ve'rachel Sheva Shanein Ve'yehi Ve'yehu Ve'enav Kayamim Achadim Um there are here three verbs, right? We've got this one, this one, and this one. Three verbs. What's the root of this one? Yes. Love. Ahav. Mm -hmm. Great love. This one? That is work. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Of God. Yep. And this one? Uh, that's the to be word, plural. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, hayu means they, uh, he, uh, he, hayu, yep. he will be, they or they will, will. okay. So, Vayahav Yaakov et Rachel. And Jacob loved Rachel. This is another a positive. It's saying who Rachel is. Batlavan, the daughter of Laban. Vayavod, and he worked. Berachel. This case, this means for her. He worked. Uh, in exchange for her. Vayavod berachel sheva shanim. He worked in exchange for Rachel. In order to receive her, he worked seven years. Vayihu ve'enav, and they were in his eyes. Keyamim achadim. This word achadim is echad. Echad means one. One. How can you have yamim Days, achadim, one, ones, one days. We would, is it, mm -hmm. is that poetic? Um, actually not. Um, if in Spanish, in Spanish, one day is called un dia. Un dia. If you say some days or a few days, a few days, is unos dias. Unos dias. The word uno can mean one, but it can also mean a few if it's in the plural. And that's what we have here in Hebrew also. That echad means one, but when you put it in the plural, it means a few. Oh. Yamim achadim, a few days. So he worked for her for seven years, but those years were in his eyes like just a few days. Like a few days. Okay. All right, I'll take the next one. By your leave. Vayehi ka'asher bahayom, vayikach lavan et lea, bito, tachat rachel. Vayiten ota elav vayavo eleha. Vayahi, it came to pass. Vayikach, he took. Vayiten, he gave. Vayavo, he came. So, and it came to pass when the day had arrived. Kasher ba hayom. Kasher ba hayom. Kasher is like according to which ba it came the day according to which the day came or when the day came lavan took lea vito his daughter this is apposition he took lea his daughter instead of rachel tachat rachel means instead of rachel and he gave her to him. Vayiten ota elav. And he came to her. Vayavo eleha. Vayavo eleha. That is, this is a different subject. This is Jacob. The vayikach and the vayiten is lavan. Lavan gave uh, Leah to Jacob instead of Rachel. That is sly. Jason, I have a question. Uh -huh. uh, what was that word? What is the meaning of that word you said? It's in. It starts with an A. Um, 
You used that in an explanation with me earlier. I don't know what it is, and I've just forgotten it. Opposition. Yes. The, it's not mm. opposite. It's, no. What does it's, that mean? Um, so the word posit, posit means put. Put. And add is the add posit. You, the D becomes a P by, uh, by analogy of sounds. So apposit means to put up against something. A positive or a position is something you put up against another thing to explain it. So this you've got David, but Dave, there could be a many, many Davids, but you could say David, king of Israel. When you say David, king of Israel, you're you're saying David, that's the subject that you're talking about, and King of Israel kind of just fits in there to explain who it is. But it doesn't have okay. its own function in the okay. sentence. All right. So Leah, okay. Leah, it says that he gave Leah. That is, Lavan gave his Leah. And his daughter is telling us which Leah it is. Okay. It's in a positive. Okay. That explains it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, I think we're back to you, John, if you want to handle this lovely sentence. Okay, the, this lady here, I think we, we encountered here before in the story of uh, when we started the whole reading process. We encountered two ladies, Zilpa, and I think her name was Bilha. Right, Bilhan Zilpa. These are the um, the mothers of Jacob's children. Zilpa. You remember that lady? Zilpa. I recognize the name. Yeah, it's a, it's an it's an old name. I don't know how they translate that into English, but it's Zilpa. You don't need meaning in in the word. It's just uh, that's her name. Okay. So, Vayiten Lavan et Zilpa, another positive here. Yeah, Shivcha To. Shivcha. So, Shiv. Ha. Shifcha. Shifcha is uh, it's the feminine version of Evid. We've got a lot of we've got a lot of slave words in Hebrew. Um, let's see. I think it's Ama, Ama, and Shifcha. I know that. Um, in the Ten Commandments, it talks about the, like this type of slave, handmaiden. Um, and this one, it says, you shall not covet your neighbor's slave or his handmaid or his ox or his donkey. Um, the word handmaid, it says amato. It says ama. Shifcha is another type of handmaid. When we have the story of the Handmaid's Tale that's told today, um, what's her name? Anne Margaret, I think. Um, oh. This is a. It's they use this word shifcha when they translate it into Hebrew. Shifcha. This is a, a handmaiden. Shifcha. So when you add the his ending o, oh, this becomes taf. Shifcha to. Shifchato, his handmaid. So Laban gave Zilpa, his handmaiden, to Leah for a handmaiden. That like he gave it to her, gave her to her, so she would become her handmaiden. Okay. Dana, if you don't mind. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay, 
את רחל ביתו, לא לאישה. And uh, Jacob fulfilled, or Jacob filled, seven um, well, the, yeah. We would think that this is a week. It means a week of years, right? A week of years, yeah. yeah. For Leah, I think. Mm -hmm. For Leah. Um, and Laban gave to him, Rachel, his daughter, for him to be a wife. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, if we take that word Shavua, we have two words in the Bible. We have Shavua, okay, which is um, Shavuim in the plural. This is what we have in the book of Daniel, where it says, uh, what does it say? Seventy weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city. It says Shavuim, Shavuim, Shavuim. Shvuim shvuim, seventy weeks. The normal word for week has a kamatz. It's shavua, shavua, and the plural is shvuot, shvuot. Uh, but it's masculine. Just so you know, general uh, knowledge. Mm -hmm. Um, so the word in Daniel is odd because it's actually this word. It's not the normal word for for a week. It actually means seven years. Shvua is seven years. So when it says uh, seven shvuim are determined for your people, it means actually seven seven year periods. It's uh, or seventy seven year periods. It's not seventy weeks like seven days, but it's uh, weeks like seven years. Okay. Next one. I think this is mine. Vayiten Lavan. Oh, it's a re repetition. Vayiten Lavan Rachel et Bilha. Bilha is the, the second one. There was Zilpa, Zilpa, and Bilha. These are the two uh, handmaidens. Oh, that's not working, is it? Okay. Uh, Zilpa and Bilha. Shifchato, again his handmaiden, la, to her, that is to Rachel, le shifcha, as a handmaiden. When you give somebody, you give a person to another person, this terrible idea, this slavery, um, you give them to the person, to whatever it is. Like this means for. Like you give them, you give her your 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 slave for a slave. Okay, it's kind of a different way of expressing it in English. It's also used for marriage. And he gave to Joseph his daughter for a wife. For a wife means as a wife. He gave her for the purpose of becoming his wife. Uh, anytime you give a person to another person, you say what they're for. For a wife, for a husband, for a for a handmaid, or for a slave. Okay. Next, this this verse um, highlighted this one shows what the verse really looked like that we should that we read before in, in uh, Genesis thirty seven with the story of uh, Joseph. It doesn't where where it said that Israel loved Joseph more than all his brothers all, or all of his sons. The, the word than, the word than is expressed with the me prefix, me. So, v'yisrael ahav et Yosef, mi kol banav. Israel loved Joseph from all of his sons. When it says from all of his sons, it means more than. He loved him more than all of his sons. And it repeated itself here. Oto ahav avihem, avihem is their father, avi, father, hem, they, avihem. Oto ahav avihem mikol echav. Him, he loved, their father, more than all his brothers. And we see this here, where we have mi lea, and we have ahav, vayehav. He loved Rachel more than Leah. 
Okay, so I'm going to let you read this, John, just with that with that comment that this means more than that he loved Rachel more than Leah. Mm -hmm. Kind of breaking up right there, if you could repeat from here to the end. Vayavodimo. Shanim is feminine, the word is Shana. Shana. It's feminine, the plural is Shanim, and the adjective that describes it would be feminine, Achirot. Shanim Achirot. Sheva Shanim Achirot. Od Sheva Shanim Achirot. Another. Uh, Od is more. Seven years others. Okay. So he came, Jacob, to Rachel, El Rachel, and he loved Vayahav, and he loved Rachel, Vayahav et Rachel mi Leah. He loved her more than more than he loved Leah. Vayavod imo, and he worked with him. That is with Lavan. He worked with him. Yet seven years others, seven other years. He worked with him another seven years. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that mem prefix that we know as from, when it's used um, in comparison, it means than or more than. So if I say, ani dadol, uh, sorry. Ani gadol mi achi Ani gadol mi achi I am bigger than my brother I am big from my brother means I am bigger than my brother Ani gadol mi achi I am big from my brother meaning I am bigger than my brother it's used as a comparison does that make sense? Yes. Okay, good. I thought that would be more confusing. All right. Uh, we have that same thing again here. Uh, Dana, you want to read this one? It's, again, the comparison. Okay. Adonai ki Yaakov ahab et Rachel mile'a Bayutan Lalea Banim Varachal Akara Akara Varachel Akara Akara. Um, all right, so the first word comes from Ra'a. Ra'a, he saw. Vayar, and he saw. Okay, do you want to translate it? And the Lord saw that Jacob loved Rachel more than Leah, and he gave to Leah sons, and to, oh, barren, and Rachel must, was barren, Akara. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Akara is an adjective form. So it could, it could have said Haita, Rachel, Rachel Haita, Haita Akara, uh, but it doesn't need it. Rachel Akara means Rachel is barren, or Rachel was barren. So the Lord saw that Jacob loved Rachel more than Leah, which caused jealousy, and God gave sons to Leah. That is to try to make up the difference, but Rachel was barren. 
Okay, trying to make up the difference because he didn't want Leia to be despised here. He felt it was unjust that Leia was despised. Mm -hmm. So then we're going to get into the, the children of Leia. Vatahar Leia. Vatahar is from Hara. Hara become pregnant. Vatahar, she became pregnant. The A ending drops. Tahar is for the feminine. Vav consecutive. Vatahar. She, gave, she became pregnant. Vatahar Lea, Vateled Ben, she gave birth to a son. Vatikra Shmo Reuven, she called his name Reuven. Reuven is from the root for seeing, Ra'a and Ben, like they saw a son. So, Ki Amra, because she said, Ra'a Oti Adonai, the Lord saw me, the Lord has seen me. Vayehav oti ishi, and my husband has loved me. The Lord has seen me, and my husband has loved me. The word for me is oti. Ra'a oti Adonai, the Lord has seen me. Vayehav oti ishi, my husband has loved me. Okay, next. Um, here we have the same. This is a really big common expression in the Bible. Vatahar vateled ben. She got pregnant and had a son. Okay. Um, Shimon is from Shama, heard. Um, because uh, you're going to see that she says that God heard her voice. Um, John, you want to go ahead? Vatahar. What was this word? Shini. Shini. Okay. Shini means second. Second. Okay. But Omer, Ama, Adonai, Va, I ten, um, it's eh, but he, ah, and more. Shimon. Shimon is uh, Simeon or Simon. Okay, so uh, we're still talking about Leah. So it says, "What's that?" The that last word. Uh, I'm just sort of staring at, it, trying to figure out where the syllable breaks are in hmm. it. It's Shim. On. Shim. Yeah. On. Okay, because I was trying to figure out what to do with the iron. Um, mm. So it's basically just completely silent. Yeah, it's heard, but it's uh, it's not worth wrestling with. Um, it's shim on on. The iron is heard in the ah ah, but uh, you don't have to pronounce it. Shim on. Um, Vataha od. She got pregnant again. The word od means again. Vateled ben, she bore a son, Sheni, a second son. Vateled ben Sheni, Vatomer, and she said, Shama Adonai, the Lord has heard, Vaitenli, and he has given me, Gam etze. This one also. Vaitenli Gam etze. Vatikra Shmo, she called his name Shimon. Based on the fact that Shama Adonai, the Lord heard. Um, the word Vateled is from the root Yalad. Yalad, which we said before would actually be with a Vav, Walad. Um, it's the word that's used for a child, Yeled. So Vataha od Vateled ben, she got pregnant again and bore. A son. All right. Next. 
Wow, look, the same phraseology. But this time, mm -hmm. instead of Ben Shini, Shini means second, it's Ben Shlishi. Shlishi means third. Okay, what do you got, Dana? The Tahar Od Vateled Ben Shlishi Vatomer Yilave Ishi Eli Vatigrashimo Levi. Okay. And, uh, okay. You can see the connection between these two words, right? Just like we saw between Shema, he heard, and Shimon, his name, uh, between Ra'a, he saw, and Reuven. Okay, so here we have Yilave and Levi. Yilave in this word, it's a nifal form, Nilva. Nilva. This would mean he was joined. So here we have like an imperfect form, he will be joined. It's probably not supposed to refer to the past tense. It's probably sp supposed to be saying, my husband has become joined to me. My husband has become joined to me, uh, connected to me. And so they named him Levi as, uh, as her celebration of the fact that her husband is now never going to leave her because... She's already given him the third son, and here her sister hasn't given him any. Uh, so do you want to translate that verse? I, I will try. I, that's an interesting the word uh, comparison between the two. I, I hadn't noticed that. I thought you, um, I thought you read that book, uh, Exodus. Um, who was it? Oh, um, <clears throat> Where, where he argued right. that the Exodus actually happened with the Levites and that the word Levi means that the people were actually joined to the, the, the Canaanite tribes. I did. I did read that book. I don't think they had the Hebrew in there, though. Right, it was, anybody, uh, they did mention it. It's, a, it's an interesting That's argument. right. Anyway. It's very interesting. If you want to read the verse, Okay. Please. Sure, I'll try. Um, and she became pregnant again. And gave birth to a third son, and she said, Yilave Ishi, now my husband will be joined to me. And she called his name Levi, uh, Levi, mm -hmm. Levi. Fantastic. Yes. Next. Mm -hmm. And of course, she Jason, has to have. I'm, what's that? I'm going to have to depart now, but I should be. Uh, back for next week's class um, depending what time we start on next week. But. I can't believe we got through half an hour just like that. 40 minutes just like that. All right. <laughs> well, I'm sad to see you go. Um, so we'll, okay. catch up, we'll catch up with you next week then. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Right. Thanks so much for coming. Bye. Uh, so we'll go ahead and finish out the reading. Okay. All right. So, Vatahar, this is again Leah getting pregnant. Vatahar od, Vatelet ben, Rivii, Vatomer ki tode et Adunai alze, Vatikrashmo Yehuda. Yehuda is connected to tode. Velo yalda od. So, she gave birth, to, she got pregnant and bore a fourth son, and she said that she would give thanks to the Lord. I think the, the, the tough here is she, like uh, Leah. She said that she would give thanks to the Lord for this. And she called his name Yehuda, which they say means uh, like Lehodot, to give thanks, and the name of God, Yeho. Yehuda, Yehuda. Velo yalda od, she didn't have any more children. She bore no more. I think that's the end of the reading for this uh, yeah, that's the end of what I did for the preparation. Um, let's see. Just, I had a question. Toda mm -hmm. uh, Um the words that were in gray or that were lit up, they're connected words, right? Or 
Yeah, that's I, I chose to do that to draw the connection. Oh, wow. Okay, the that's interesting. Okay. Tode and Yehuda. Um, also Yehuda, in, I in see them. Yilave and Levi. Uh, Shimon okay. and Shama. I didn't underline Shama, but... Uh, okay, yeah. now I see it. All right, thank you. Okay. All right, so as uh, right. the first time that you got to participate in an encounter with us, um, is there anything that you need to, that you want to ask to get caught up to where we are? Or do you feel that you're caught up? Um, <clears throat> it's, it's a matter of getting um, used. As, I, I think chapter five was hard and um, I was watching it. So with the historic vowels and the lengthening mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, the reducing. So that's something that, I find um, I just have to go back over the chapter and look at it. I mean, it's hard to remember a lot of that stuff. So, but I can't think of anything right now. No. <clears throat> yeah, I think I mentioned right to now. you. I think I mentioned to you that, that that information was also something that was new to me when I got into this book. Um, mm -hmm. I, I didn't learn it that way. I just kind of we were taught memorize the singular form and the plural form and the construct and the construct plural. Uh, just memorize the forms and the more you run into them, the more you recognize them. But it is interesting, I have to say, to see that there is a pattern to it with the whole the, the whole idea of near and distant, distant one, distant two and whatever. That is interesting and I can see how it's useful, but on the other hand, it adds a lot of theoretical material to the to the topics, uh, kind of making it harder. If you, if you don't if you don't already know, for example, the word adama, if you don't know like all of the vowels that go here, adama, it's kind of hard to get from that to admat, where you have you know the the reduction here. You could, I mean, you can explain this. And it's near. This is distant one, and this is distant two. That they try, that they try to have uh, shiva each in each one. It resolves. I mean, you can explain that it's it's okay, but it's kind of difficult because they want you to find the historical form before you even know all of the forms of the word. Like when you know mm -hmm. adamot, when you know the plural. I mean, you can easily work. You know, you can work from the forms that you know to the historical forms. It's fine. But if you don't know the forms, it's hard to go from something that you don't know back into the historical forms. You know, because I think to really get the historical forms or the historic forms or whatever, you have to already know all of the forms of the noun as it exists. Then I might like uh, like Kelev. You have to know that you've got Kelev, and you have to know that you've got Kalbo, his dog. Uh, you have to know that you have Klavim. Once you know the forms, you can work back into the, the historical. You, know, you can work back from, from here, you've got Kalab. Kalab. And from here, you've got Kalb. You can work back into it because you know the forms, but if you don't know the forms, I don't know how you can do it. Okay, right. I, I had a hard time <clears throat> putting up a top there. I mean, I wanted, it was, it's hard for me to see how does that go from segel to a patak, but I'm, that may be putting more work into it than what I needed to do. It just, it just was. Yeah. Well, so the historic forms here are malk and kalb. And it feels weird to have kaf like this at the end of a word, but historically there was no distinction between uh, final kaf and a regular kaf. So you had, um, this is malk, where you have mem, lamed, kaf. There was no final kaf. Kaf was written the same. It was written like this no matter what position it was in. So you had Kalb, which is um, like this, Kalb, and then you have Melech, and the Kaf is the same in both positions. So historically, we're talking, we don't need to write like Melech, because we're trying to deal with 
you know, the shape of the word as it was historically. So it's better to write actually kaf like this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's really weird for us also to have a hard bet at the end of a word. Because we're used to any time a bet is at the end of a word, it's going to be soft. But historically, mm -hmm. you know, if we're looking for the, the root of it, it's kalb. That's the root of the singular, kalb. So I understand that it's uh, it's hard to go back to those forms whenever these are not the forms we deal with, you know. But then when you say his dog, you do deal with that historical form, kalb, kalbo, his dog, kalbo. Well, in two syllables, there was two and there were singular syllables. So I was looking at just reviewing those, mm -hmm. malka, I think, and then after the king and queen. Okay. Yeah. Well, we have, you know, we have a lot of we have a lot of ancient texts that actually use the the old letters. So this would be king. Oh, yeah, I'm not familiar with those. This is Israel. This is Yod, Shin, Resh, Aleph, Ahmed. So when we have the forms, like we would write them like this. But in the time of Hezekiah and whatever, the time of the Bible, they actually wrote with these letters. They wrote with different letters. How do we know if they pronounced this as Melech or if this was like Malku, Malku Israel? How do we know? Like there's, we can't really know. Well, we, the vowel system that we received is from the Masoretic period. We can't really be absolutely sure how they pronounced things in ancient times, you know? Anyway, too much information. Um, let's see, chapter 10. Chapter 10 is just going to be numbers. It's going to be, I think, really easy for you. Because you already know the numbers. Um, but I do hope that you'll start to be able to join us. I would like to. And, and keeping up with the workbook. So um, that's keeping me busy. And yeah, the, the biggest thing in this course is the, the reading. So... Um, let me go ahead and we'll end the class as far as the recording is concerned, and we'll uh, we'll pick up just uh, talking. Just a second. That's it. That's the end of the encounter. I'm going to upload this to the YouTube uh, YouTube Magal Magal videoing the the group the collection of uh, videos, and we'll meet up next week.